fishing influencer Nicole Jacobs is here to give tips and advice on crappie catching. Let's dive in. If you're fishing from shore or you're fishing out of a kayak or are fishing out of a boat, um, just, just get started. Don't feel intimidated. A lot of women especially ask me this question because they feel it's a male-dominated sport and I always say fish don't discriminate so anyone can enjoy the sport of fishing. It's just a matter of taking that leap of faith and, and getting out there and keeping it simple. Um, us bass fishermen like to overcomplicate it <laughs> with lots of stuff. But we're going to simplify it today. I'm going to talk about two techniques for crappie fishing and how to kind of get started spring crappie fishing. So. Awesome. Well, then I'm going to let you go ahead and get started and um, feel free to ask questions yes. to Nicole. And, but she's going to give us a couple demonstrations. And yeah, excited to Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, for those of you here in Minnetonka and for those of you online, please uh, send in your questions, send in any, any questions you have during or after just comment in the section below and we'll answer that. Um, I'm really going to talk about crappie, spring crappie fishing. It's like my favorite time. Us Minnesotans really, you know, we get stuck with ice. We still have ice on our lakes here right now, so we're having a really late spring. So for me, it's really exciting when ice is out. It's like crappies are about to get going on spawning and uh, moving to shallow waters. But for those of you living in the south and stuff, you get to, you're lucky your spawning starts earlier um, on those reservoirs and everything. But we're just going to get started with the basics. So I did tell you, yes, I'm a professional fisherman for bass, but I fish for everything. Crappies are my second love. Like I said, I grew up fishing lakes here in Minnesota, but these techniques can be used anywhere. So like I said, first time, um, the first move crappies are going to do when ice is out here in Minnesota, um, they're still going to be in those winter holes. And I gave you guys a map just kind of so we can, I'm going to show online real quick. I'm going to be talking about uh, winter holes, what to look for, um, pre-spawn and spawning areas so it's easy to find crappies. Um, so the first thing they're going to do is move from their winter holes. The males are the first ones that are going to be moved. Um, so crappies will find the deepest holes in the winter to, to sit on. That's where they're going to be. So um, when water temps start to rise, when the ice is out, so then they'll start to move vertically first and then they're going to move into pre-spawn areas and then spawn areas. Um, crappies start to spawn in about 54 to 60 um, degree temps, but it just depends on where you are in the state and whatnot. Um, let's talk about the spawn. Some of you might not know what the spawn means or what it means. Basically, male crappies are going to start moving into the shallow waters when it reaches about 60 degrees. 58 is when they're starting to go. The actual spawn happens around 65 degrees. Uh, but the males are going to move up first. They're going to create these bulls into these shallow spawning areas. That's where they're going to have the females will come in and then the spawn is that the females will lay the eggs and the males will fertilize them. Then something to note about big female crappies is they're hard to catch. They don't sit in the shallows long. As soon as they spawn, they tend to go out deep. So people are like, where do I start? Whether you're on shore or you're out of your kayak or out of your boat, the best place to start is on the north side of these lakes. The sun is going to be angled from the south at that time. So you want to either fish on the north side of the lakes if there's areas. You also want to fish um, in bays. So if you're in a boat, you want to get in these back bays like Lake Minnetonka. There's some great dirtier areas that are warm up so like sooner than others. But I would first and foremost go to the north to northwest side of the lakes uh, and look for boat channels. Like you're going to look for um, if you're in reservoirs down south, you're going to look for a creek mouse. You're going to look for any type of channel like that where they're going to go back. They're going to spawn in those back bay areas. Um, crappies also, something that, that's the biggest thing you need to know, crappies move a lot this time of year, especially in Minnesota when our weather is finicky. It's, it can be really great one day. It could be 50 here or 70 and then it could be 30 the next day. So everything's based on temperature. Everything's going to be based on water temp as well. Um, so the early, you know, bite windows, I want to talk about that real quick. The best bite windows are usually in the mornings at dusk or at, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, in the morning and then at dawn and then at dusk. So those are the perfect bite windows. But during the pre-spawn and spawn, you can pretty much catch crappies all throughout the day because they're active. So let's talk about the transitions. You can look at this map real quick. So these are great areas. Uh, if you're wanting to research areas, if you have a boat or a kayak, you're going to want to look for these deep winter hole areas. 
and look for back bay areas where they're going to have those winter holes and then those crappies will then eventually move up to pre-spawn areas that's when they're moving they're going to stage in those areas and then the males will move up to the spawning areas in about anywhere between 60 uh, to 65 degrees so great things to look for when um, spawning crappies or pre-spawn i tend to look like crappies are going to naturally gravitate um, here in Minnesota towards weed lines. So those are great areas to start. I like to start shallow. A lot of fishermen start deep and control over that. But really you're gonna look for weed lines, um, weed beds, bulrushes. That's where they're gonna start to spawn. Um, I tend to start shallow and move back out. This is how I like to go for it. But I, I talked to you about this. First things crappies are gonna do in those winter holes, they're gonna go vertically. The males are gonna, so you can actually, if you, if you think it's too cold, you don't wanna start in there and you wanna start deep, vertical jigging and winter holes are a great area to start with. Um, so if, for you guys that are down south or tuning in, if you're in a reservoir, some of the great areas, there's not a lot of weeds in those reservoirs, so they're gonna like spawn on docks, rocks, stuff like that, any type of cover. Um, so then I told you the first, the males will move from the winter holes and they'll make their jet to pre-spawn areas and then they'll stage. Staging crappies are really fun. That's what I love to fish for. In about 12, anywhere from 10 to like 15 feet is where they'll stage and then they'll start moving up real shallow um, to two to anywhere. They can, some of them in Minnesota can, like they can spawn in a foot water, but the actual spawning area is about anywhere from two feet to four feet. Again, so pressure, you have to go by water temps. Water temps are what you're gonna find, you're gonna know, but you can take this home with you. If you can gauge, like you can kind of understand the basic um, the water temps area where they're gonna move. So if it's, if it's 60 degrees and they're spawning one day, they might be moved up. But if a cold front comes through and barometric pressures will drop and those crappies will move back out deep. So if you know one day you caught, you know, crappies up in the spawning area and it's cold the next day and a cold front goes through and drops about 20 degrees, you're going to want to go to pre-spawn or winter hole areas. So just that's how you can pattern these fish. Um, again, if you're in a boat and if you have electronics, the, another indicator, you want to look for bait fish. You want to look for big balls of bait fish. Um, that will also tell you kind of where the crappies are going because they're feeding right now. Uh, anywhere, again, from 2 to, to 4 feet or 5 to 10 feet. If you're not in a boat, if you are fishing from shore, the best way to kind of look for those is to look for structure on line or look for structure on shore, whether it's a lay down or if you see a weed bed, anything like that. Um, bridges are great areas to start. They like to they gravitate towards those warmer areas because the, the rocks and bridges will heat up faster. Um, so I wanted to get into technique um, and some of the crappie. I will pass this around for those of you in here. This is like a basic box that I use. I just keep it pretty simple. I have bobbers and different types of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, First um, uh, technique I want to talk to you about is when I, I use, you can use for rods, you can use anywhere from like a six foot light to six foot ultralight. I personally like ultralight because they feel like mega, mega fish when you're bringing them in. So when I'm actually looking for those pre-spawners and from winter hole areas, I'm going to start with a moving bait. So you want to cast and move along those pre-spawn areas to deep water holes. Um, I love the Northland Tackle Thumper Jig. Um, I use the pink and white or I use a shad color bait depending on what the water clarity is like. So I can pass this around too. For those of you online, it's just a little um, grub with a little spinner. So this is what I'll, the first technique I will do. I will cast around all these areas and kind of try to locate fish. Um, cadence is depending on, it's just depending on the time of day. It depends on the time or the weather and, and whatnot. Um, I have this rod rigged with um, Seaguar fluorocarbon leader with a Seaguar Smackdown 15 pound braid. I personally like starting people on braid if you're on a spin rod um, because it's easier to cast, especially for kids. And then braided line braided line. I can pass this around as well. So, and it lasts longer. You can keep this braid on here for a couple of years and you're actually going to save money and because it's easier to cast. I also used a 
uh, Sega Gold Label leader. It's a four pound leader. I do any, it depends on where you're fishing, but my sweet spot is four pound tests, fluorocarbon. Why I use fluorocarbon line is because fluorocarbon will sink and it's virtually invisible underwater. Um, a lot of people in the north are used to using monofilament. Mono stretches, um, has more memory, um, and it floats. So it's really not a great line. So I encourage you to try out some fluorocarbon. Um, Seeger came out with a brand new Basics. Um, it is a little more expensive usually, but Basics is actually the same as a mono. So this is at a $9.99 price point. Um, so once I find my crappies, whether I'm using a little spinner like this, you can use a little spinner bait or crank bait to locate those crappies. Then I like to um, switch it up and use a bobber rig. This bobber is called a rocket bobber, really, really easy to put on, or a slip bobber, um, especially if you have kids. A lot of people, I grew up fishing with those push button bobbers, but to be honest, these slip bobbers are great for pre-spawning and spawning bass because the crop, or not bass, I'm sorry, <laughs> crappies, um, because when crappies come up, they will come up from the bottom and hit the, the lure, and you're, you can indicate, you can see that indication of that bite easier on a slip bobber, so that's something I, I really recommend. So I wanted to kind of show you how I do the slip bobber. So um, say I'm fishing spawning or pre-spawning areas, so I'll cast it out. I'll reel in real slow in the pre-spawn time, because that's they'll usually hit it on that that reel in, and then every once in a while I'll stop it, and then I'll pop the, I'll pop the, I wish I had a water tank, but I'll pop the um, bobber, and sometimes those crappies, as soon as I hit that pop, they'll smack that, that uh, lure that you have on. Um, in terms of jigs, you can use anything from a hair jig, um, I use a 132nd ounce to a 116 ounce jig. I have a variety of different jigs. But my go-to colors, I will tell you, are pink and white and chartreuse and black. And that is like, I do not stir, like, go far from that. And sometimes I'll do chartreuse. Um, but there's several different types of jigs you can uh, use in order to bobber fish. I wanted to talk about live bait versus a lot of us in Minnesota, I'm sure, grew up, I grew up fishing with live bait. We didn't have, like, the innovation back then like we do now. Um, I really, really love gulp alive minnows. I rig all my stuff now with, we can pass these around, too. I get two different colors, one are, like, a chartreuse for dirtier water or more of a shad color or minnow color for, for clear water. And then I use also these um, gulp wax worms. You're going to get more for your money buying this kind of stuff. This is like $7 for a whole thing, and you're going to have this forever. Um, but don't let it dry on your hook because it'll get stuck. Um, you'll have to clip it off. But try to always take those off when you're done. But um, if you're fishing stuff like those deep winter holes, you can't beat a jig and a minnow. I will say a jig and a plastic or a jig and a minnow. So if you do start in those deeper holes, that's always... I mean, there's always a place and a time to have live bait. But if you really want to save money and uh, catch fish, I catch several. Um, two years ago, I caught a good 14, 15 inch crappie in the shallows just fishing with plastics. And sometimes crappies right away will also like smaller baits. So I even use ice fishing tackle. That's just like a little technique that I use here in Minnesota um, as well. One second. So we kind of went over rods. Um, for kids, I would start anywhere between a five, five foot rod to a six foot rod for crappies. You can go anywhere from an ultralight to a light rod. Um, you can also use for kids those push button or spin cast rods um, and rig them that way as well with a bobber. So I want to talk to you guys about selective harvesting, something that's really important here in Minnesota. Um, if you're going to go out to fish for food and fish to keep the crappies, I would recommend keeping crappies from 9 inches to 11 inches. Anything over the 12 inch mark, uh, we recommend throwing back. They are huge. Those fish are old. <laughs> And you want to keep the ecosystem going. We need those big crappies in order to keep that, that school year and also to keep on. Uh, we don't want to decline in the, in the crappie gene pool. So the more, yeah, you might catch a trophy crappie. 
I recommend practicing CPR, which is catch, picture, and uh, releasing that fish because that will keep the, the lake and the system uh, or reservoir healthy. So lastly, I just want to kind of go over some basic safety tips, um, something especially if you're taking kids out or if you're fishing from shore, make sure you have, you know, appropriate um, life jackets. If you're fishing out of the kayak, make sure you have an appropriate life jacket for that. Um, I also recommend having emergency kits as well. A lot of these new emergency kits, you have like blankets in case you fall in. I always, in the spring or summer, I always have an extra thing of clothes because I fish a lot, but uh, it's something, some things we don't think about. Uh, so just to keep a, to keep an eye on that. And also, um, you do need a fishing license where you fish. So if it's your first time and you don't know where to, to get a fishing license, you can usually get them. Um, the best place to start is at Take Me Fishing um, online, and they will decide where, what location you are, if you're out in Minnesota or if you're in Delaware, wherever. You can find everything about fishing license on Take Me Fishing uh, as well. So that's about it for me. Do we have any questions? Okay, back, just back a little to those. So will you use those, whatever? Yeah, I can just pass these around. Nicole's mom, by the way, I should know more than I do. But, uh, so you put a live bait with that? No, no, these are in, sorry, good question. Um, these are in place of live bait, so. But you it, said something about a minnow. Yep, this is like a little minnow. It looks oh. like a minnow. And this looks like a waxworm. So, so I'll pass those around. So you don't need live bait. You don't. I recommend not using live bait because you can catch just as many fish using Gulp Live or... Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. A lot of innovation out there. But again, there's always a place and the time for live bait. If that's all you can afford, then go for that as well. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just want to add for families going off these two. Nicole, of course, was athletic and was... They were out with their data. Mom would, did go sometimes too. But the best thing is just getting outdoors. Getting outdoors, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of, with COVID now and everything, I think people are gonna be anxious to get out. It is, it's true. So what I say, if you're taking your kids out for the first time, um, if you're only fishing for 10 minutes, um, let them fish for 10 minutes and then go swimming. Like, whatever you need to do in the spring, like, just keep them engaged. If they wanna play with the bait, great. If they wanna play on their iPhone for 10 minutes, whatever. It's about the experience. I call it catching memories. So it's just about having that instilled passion. If you push it with kids, they're not gonna enjoy it. So make sure you're just, you know, catering to the kids when you are out with the kids. I love crappies. Um, the biggest success I had catching crappies only once, one after another, it was on a, you said, it was a shell roller at Rush Lake on the edge of the, the week. Yep, it depends on the time of year, or like if we are fishing in the summer and the sun's high, they're gonna go immediately go to cover, especially when they're spawning, they're gonna attract and go to cover. So yeah, in Minnesota, there's tons of good weed lines that we can fish, so if you wanna start shallow, I'd start on those shallow weed lines and then move your way up. Cast into those weeds. And it's just a technique, practice in, in casting and you just gotta keep practicing. <laughs> Any other questions at all? Spinner bait, like a little bit larger. They work. They work during the pre-spawn. So, like, if you want to throw those, like, to try to search for fish, I like throwing those. And they can, when they're on that type of stuff, they're on it. So, those little spinner baits are great. So, if you don't like the stumper jig, I've just had a lot of success with these stumper jigs in Minnesota. I mean, I have no tie to Northland. I'm just telling you what I use. Um, I love throwing little crankbaits too. I don't throw a lot of crankbaits. I'm old school. Like. I like just one moving bait, and then I like to bobber. You can't beat a bobber fishing. And um, bobber, too, instead of just letting it sit, just keep that constant moving and then popping it every once in a while. That popping action when you just are in the shallows if they're spawning or the pre-spawn areas, that little slight pop, they'll tend to hit that jig or whatever you have on there as soon as you get that pop. As far as technique, is there anything we can go to online to view some techniques? or? Like on your website? Yeah, I can post, you know, um, in following this, I can also post some like casting pictures or technique specific when I get out. Um, we're still frozen here. So as soon as it warms up, and I, I'm going to be going to Virginia for a uh, tournament next week. So I will try to get that out. Thank you for reminding me because that's a great. I do fish out of a kayak too, and I can go over that technique on how I'm popping it out and reeling in as well. Yeah. You said you had a Seaguard 15 pound braid. Yep. Can you adjust that at all? Yeah, it depends. If you want to, 
a lot of people too will buy a rod. Say you just want, this is your first time fishing and you want a rod for everything. I recommend getting a medium size rod. You can go here, you can, I'm sure they have some rods here as well. These combos are great. This might actually be a great setup um, as well. Um, let's see. I can do more research. This is more, yep, this is a medium. This is a little long, but um, you can go online here at West Marine. Anything in that six range to seven foot range and medium is a good overall rod for everything. So say you catch bass and you want to start out and you don't want to get so specific. I love having my, again, ultralights are super fun because when you get a crappie, it's like con coming in. You're like, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> your rod and you get super excited. You can feel the bites. But if you're looking for just a starter rod, I really recommend the combos. Uh, any type of combo, medium size. I like fishing with braid because it's a 15 pound. You could go 10 to 20 when I'm fishing for bass. That might even be too much for crappies. You can get down to 10 and do a four pound leader. That's just all I had today. So does that answer your question? Okay. Online people. All right. They want to know what's your personal best crappie? Personal best crappie. Gosh, I don't know about when I was a kid, but recently, two years ago, I got a 14 and a half inch crappie on Lake Minnetonka. And that was in the spawning on the weed. I was doing exactly that bobber technique. I had popped it. We had caught in several males, and there was one female that had gone up, and it was a beautiful crappie. Yeah. So that's my personal. That was this time of year. We were actually out fishing at this time. It was literally April. <laughs> it was like mid-April this time of year. But um, again, seasons are different, and the spawn's going to be way later this year. So. Um, and what is a good bait to use for crappies for kids that lose interest quickly? God, that's a good question. Um, it's just rotating it up. Honestly, as a kid, I really liked casting constantly. So I wish my dad, grew, we grew up just fishing with like little um, jigs and, and bobbers. If kids get bored of that, I would just try them. I would have them try throwing one of these spinners or any type of little moving bait. That should help. Again, when it's with kids that if they're losing interest, Make it about the kids. So that's the best advice. I did an article recently, like two years ago, about crappie fishing on Lake Minnetonka and fishing for families. Don't overdo it. Don't expect them to go out all day with you. Like, keep it, keep it short, especially when you're new to introducing uh, them so they don't get bored. Any other questions? Um. Tina wants you to come fishing with her in South Carolina. <laughs> I was just in those areas. I was in North Carolina last weekend, so I would love to. I still haven't figured out reservoir crappies, really. Uh, when I fished for crappies on Beaver Lake, we did fish at night, so like that was more in the summer. So crappies have different patterns, but I'm just talking about spring for now. So, but if you're in this fall, if you're in the south, uh, definitely look for channels, creeks, um, mouth of creeks, and then you're going to look for docks. They're going to they're gonna definitely gravitate towards those docks. Tina also asked, can you explain how you do the bobber and do you place it differently depending on the type of fish? Um, I only bobber fish for panfish, and so um, this is a great bobber. This is called a rocket bobber. These are really easy to use, or a slip bobber, and like you can adjust it. You just push like that, and you can actually just adjust it so I'm going to adjust my bobber based on the depth. This is something I didn't go over. So if I'm in two feet of water or four, I'm going to have my bobber real shallow. But if I'm out spawning and they're out pre-spawning in the winter holes, I can go deeper than this. So it just depends. That's something key. Thank you for asking that question. You're going to want to adjust that bobber based on the depth um, that you're in. Does that answer the question? So. OK. Any other questions for me? such a great question. Um, I do sometimes, like I do a lot of sports fishing now, but if I want to go out and catch crappies and make crappie tacos and stuff like that, um, I use something that when I cook, like a lot of people use um, peanut oil. I actually gravitate towards sunflower oil. So I'll use sunflower oil, I'll use it eggs, and then a basic cracker or shoreline seasoning. Um, if I'm doing like broiled fish, I'll just do a lemon butter type mix um, for crappie tacos. But yeah, I can definitely do some of these videos in the future. <laughs> um, Richard wants to know what kind of shoes you wear fishing. 
what kind of shoes I were fishing. So I just got these brand new shoes. They're really awesome. Um, Spiri has these brand new fishing shoes. They're super lightweight. They're waterproof. If I can go into that, um, check out the new Spiri line. They're, uh, I love it. And they're blue. They match. So yeah, any type of tennis shoes, but I really gravitate towards the fishing tennis shoes. So um, West Marine carries Spiri's and I recommend these. Anything that's waterproof, I can. these are going to float too as well. So I'm not a sandal person. I know a lot of people <laughs> fish in sandals. I'm just, that's not me. I don't want to hook in my foot. I'm, when I'm fishing, it's, it's game on, right? So. Um, and then can you talk again about what depth of water is best? It depends on the time of year. It depends on the temps. It depends on the weather outside. Um, for, for pre-spawners, you know, you're going to look for 12 to 15 feet, 10 to 15 feet. They're going to be in about that range. It'll be just before the spawn. Crappie spawn at, uh, the actual spawn happens around 65, 60 to 65. So 58 temps, those fish are going to start moving up. Anywhere from 55 and up, they're going to start moving. Does that answer that question? I mean, like, if you don't know, if you went to shallow outside weeds or something, is that... Like you're going in the morning in a Minnesota lake. So I would start in a back bay. Like you don't go in the deep middle of the lake. No, I'm going to find on my map. if I, I, I can use, and if you don't have electronics, you can download the Navionics app on your phone, and it'll give you all the contours. And I'm going to look for a hole, like on this. I'm going to look for a winter area like this. So I'm going to start looking for that. I might start shallow and move my way out, but at least I know that they're going to be somewhere. Navionics. So I would start and then gra they're going to gravitate up to this pre-spawn area. They're going to stage in that area. That can be really fun to catch. And then up on the spawn area when, when, yes. Uh, I used to uh, go uh, ice fishing. I used a uh, wax one before. Yeah. Some crappies. Uh, I, uh, I use a live waxy. Um, I caught a, a nice crappie with the live waxy. Yeah. Like bait. I yep. Dropped, I dropped down the ice fishing hole. Got a coffee and a That's awesome. So awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yes, I use a lot in the wintertime. I do use live bait. I type, uh, I use when I'm ice fishing or even now. You can still use crop, you can still use wax worms or spikes. Um, Euro larvae, Euro larvae is great because they don't, they don't come off the hook as much as the wax worms do. But there's a time and place for everything. I really like plastics just because you can get more out of that versus losing a, a waxy. But they, they definitely love those waxies as well. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Um, Chelsea wants to know your best memory fishing on the water. Gosh, I have so many. Fishing with my son Cole and then like I think one of my best crappie memories is with my dad. We <laughs> back then we didn't have electronics. We were like old school. We line up church steeple, red cabin. I remember we hit this place called Jake's Bar and every cast I was catching a crappie or, or a sunny and that's like the best memory I have with my dad but I mean I've been very blessed to fish all over the country but my best memories were definitely growing up and that's what instilled my passion. Well I can't thank you enough for being thank here. Thank you. Nicole. That was so great. Such great information. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from you. Thank you. Yes. Um, and super excited. We're going to do these Women Making Waves series every Wednesday in the Yay. month of April. Yeah. yeah. And next week we're actually going to be in Sausalito with Annie Nagel. So yes, I Annie. I don't know if you guys can all make it to Sausalito, but I hope uh, you guys can Turn tune in, in yeah. on Facebook, um, and we'll see you then. So, yes. Yeah, thank and if you, you want to follow my journey as well, um, you can go to Nicole Fishing on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm also partnered with West Marine and Take Me Fishing as well. So. Yeah, feel free to keep this conversation going um, online and ask your questions. We'd love to get back to you on it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Be the first to see new videos, keep us on your radar by clicking subscribe. And for more fishing tips, tricks, and how-to guides, check out our advice and how-to section on westmarine.com. Wishing you tight lines and good times.